I always say, you ever heard of Joe Namath? Oh, yeah. Well, that creates a conversation. And so I always kid him a little bit, and I said, well, now you've met one of the guys that helped made him famous. It's a long way from the plains of West Texas to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But in 1958, a spidery 175-pound pass catcher began his tenacious journey. His name was Don Maynard. When I got drafted by the Giants, I was real surprised because uh, I'm not sure I really knew where New York was. It was just like looking in National Geographic when I saw New York City, and I looked up and I saw a building that had more bricks in it than some of the towns I lived in. Country Don rode the bus to Yankee Stadium, where the rookie from Texas Western etched his name in the record book. High score, 17 all. History is made. The teams will play the first sudden death overtime period. Don Maynard muffed the first ever overtime kickoff. Maynard takes the kickoff, fumbles but recovers and is flattened on the Giant 19. The following year, Coach Ali Sherman took over the Giant offense and cut Country Don. You know, I was devastated. But uh, that's, that's what happens. And 10 years later, I got a Super Bowl ring, and I really don't know where Ali Sherman is and don't care. <laughs> the road to that Super Bowl led to Canada, then back to New York, where Maynard was the very first draft pick of a team called the Titans, New York's entry in the brand new American Football League. The league was a throwing league. They put on a good show. The first year, we scored more points on offense than ever been scored in pro football. The Titan ticket sales were less than brisk until Sonny Werblin bought the team in 1963 and renamed it the Jets. Weeb Eubank became Maynard's new coach. In 64, Shea Stadium became his stage. And in 1965, Joe Namath became Country Don's ticket to stardom. Joseph, I always called him. I said, I'm going to make you a better quarterback, and you're going to make me a great receiver. But I said, we're going to talk on every play, every route ahead of time. You don't think it has to be that much on the money? No, I mean, I don't think you have to leave it to the sideline that much. And we're going to have the timing down so good that you can throw them blindfolded and you'll never miss it. Their timing was impeccable. Their rapport, unflappable. Their results, unparalleled in their era. We were ahead of a lot of coaches in our passing game, and we designed a lot of our own pass plays and all. Every pass route I ran was a two-part pass route. An out was really an out go. If the out was there, name it through it. If it wasn't, he laid it up for the goal. You do a hook, it's really a hook goal. If you do a post, it's a post goal. The operative word was go. For Country Don was considered one of the fastest players of his generation. I don't think I was one of them. I think I was the fastest. Nobody ever caught me from behind, and you know, I wasn't worried about, about that part of it. In 1968, Maynard surpassed Raymond Berry for most receiving yards in a career. Ted Woolley had his call up there today. Later that year, the Jets hosted the AFC Championship. We're playing the biggest game of my career, and probably also the Jets, maybe. Namath back to pass on second down, throws for the end zone, touchdown for Maynard. A Super Bowl berth hung in the balance. You got to win this one. So uh, we'd gotten behind, and uh, I kind of told Namath, I said, Joseph, I got a long one when you need it. I'm going down the field running side by side with Atkinson, and I've got him beat, and I'm to the outside, and I'm reaching here about 10 o'clock to catch the ball, and all of a sudden the wind catches it, and in the whole movement of the thing, my arms, I go from 10 o'clock all the way around, my head turns, and I catch it over here about 2 o'clock, and I go out of bounds on the six-yard line. To me, it, it was. It was the greatest catch I ever made, and don't run it back, because I might miss it. Moments later, Namath looked off his primary target and drilled Country Don with the game winner. The New York Jets were off to Miami for Super Bowl III. The Super Bowl, to me, was an easy game. We wasn't going to change anything we'd done all year. Unbeknown to the Colts, 
Maynard played with a hamstring injury, but still drew double teams and stretched the field, allowing George Sauer to have a huge day against man coverage. I knew I was going to get the loser share just for showing up. I said, well, men, we all going to get the loser share. For sure, all you got to do is go out there and play a little extra and you can get the winner's share. The Jets made NFL history and Country Don got his coins. Now you gotta, you're going to get a check for 15000 I said, I don't want no check. I want mine in dimes. I want mine in dimes. I want to feel it. <laughs> in 1969, Maynard became the first pass catcher in history to amass 10,000 yards receiving. On a Monday night in 1972, he became pro football's leader in career receptions at the time. His Hall of Fame induction assured that the original Titan will always be remembered. I came to play and I came to stay. Football was a game, Country Don was the name. I made a mark and I became a star with a lot of help from near and far. There was good ones and great ones I played with and against. Thank you, good Lord, for that wonderful chance. I played the best, and I believe I passed the test. I'm glad this over, I need some rest. God loves you, I love you too.